Okay. So how did playing a Grand Slam semifinal in front of fans differ from playing a Grand Slam semifinal with no fans? Um, I think it added a little bit of uh, extra nerves, a little bit of extra pressure, just wanting to perform well in front of people. Um, I think, you know, also I was thinking a little bit about um, the celebration uh, and hearing, hearing um, you know, everyone applauding. So I think um, maybe I lost a little bit of uh, the, the focus that I, that I had before, maybe with, with no fans. So how did the actual um, celebration live up to your visualization? Uh, well, it took a lot longer than I, than I had hoped for. Um, there were a lot extra points that I really planned to play, but um, yeah, I mean, I, when I, I was just so nervous, so my, I couldn't feel my legs, my arms were shaking, I, I was just hoping she would miss, and, and she didn't, and she was playing more aggressive, and then I was like, I started, you know, rambling, mumbling on, and on and on and on, and then it was just point by point, point by point, and then eventually I was uh, able to close it out, and, um, you know, to have the fans there, it was just a different atmosphere, um, even if it was first round, to have the fans there cheering. Um, it's it's just, it's more emotional. Okay, Scott? Yeah, you seem a bit flat-footed out on court early in the match. Any idea why, why that might have been the case? Um, no, I felt I felt good in the warm-up, felt good physically. Um, I still feel good uh, physically after the match. Um, I think it was just maybe just nerves and also... Um, just maybe a little bit mentally, um, not a hundred percent there. Um, was just thinking about you know the occasion and um, the end result, or uh, yeah, just getting a little bit ahead of myself. So I think then I wasn't really able to focus on how I wanted to play and um, you know use my my legs and uh, be physical out there. Okay, Matt. Well, I guess uh, two questions. One, picking up on that about you know thinking about the occasion. Do you anticipate having to go through that in the first couple of games on Saturday night and, you know, dealing with it? And then also sort of along the same lines, you talk about not being able to feel your, feel your legs and, you know, your arms and goosebumps. How do, you, how do you play tennis when you can't feel your legs and your arms are shaking? Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. Uh, it's, um, it's not easy, you know. I, I started the game well. Um, I had two aces. Uh, and then uh, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's ball out here, Jenny. Let's keep it rolling, you know, just do more. Um, and then I got to 40-15, and then it was like, the, you know, I, I, like, hyped up the crowd, and then I was like, oh, I, I put a little bit of extra pressure on myself there because I just got so nervous, and then I wasn't able to, to, to find a first serve or to make a first serve and um, play the way that I wanted to play. I was just pushing the ball and... Um, like I said, just just hoping she would miss, um, and then she was able to step up and play more aggressive. So I wasn't really able to play the way that I wanted to, the way that I, you know, I wasn't able to play to win. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, on Saturday I'll definitely come out and I'll I'll definitely be nervous 100%. But there's no hiding it. Um, I just have to embrace it and, and enjoy the moment. Okay, Chris. First Grand Slam final. Can you pick out two or three moments from? I don't know, your childhood or early adulthood of where someone believed in you or you had a real breakthrough that led you to this moment that actually got to the point where you thought, I can make it to the very top? Um, well, I would say throughout my junior career, you know, all the coaches that I had, um, I was training at the Everett Tennis Academy and they've... They were always telling me, you know, I have I have potential um, to be a great tennis player, but it was just finding what, just finding my game and finding, um, you know, I had a bit of a temper as a kid. Uh, wasn't really mentally the toughest, um, so I think that has uh, kind of just shifted my whole career. Um, just being able to stay in tough moments, uh, close out tough matches, uh, just just fight my way back regardless of the score. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I was told, like I said, my whole junior career that um, I have a good, I have a good forehand, good serve. Uh, I just needed to put the two things together, and and uh, you know, now I, I have. When did you really believe it? 
Um, I would say probably last year because um, I had the start of the year. I had some good wins. Um, I was practicing with the top players, and you know, once I I was able to see, okay, I, they don't really hit the ball much bigger than I do. They don't do anything super spectacular compared to what I do. So I, I can I can do the same. Okay, here. Yeah. Do you have a bit of an affinity with Australia? I think you sometime, at some stage mentioned about the Brisbane International, how that really was a confidence-boosting win and maybe a turning point in your career. Yeah, I, I love playing in Australia. It feels like home to me. Um, it's it's very similar to America, I feel. Um, yeah, I, I, I think um, everyone looks forward to coming to Australia, especially, you know, the beginning of the year, the Australian summer. It's it's the most exciting for me. It's um, I mean, Brisbane is one of my top five favorite tournaments. Uh, just I, I don't know why. Just it just feels like home. I think it's the conditions is a little bit more humid there, similar to Florida. Um, and I and I play good tennis in Australia. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, I feel really comfortable here. OK, Karen and then Aki. Um, Naomi, today, it's a two-part question about your semifinal against Naomi last year. She described it today as one of her most memorable matches. And coming from a three-time Grand Slam champion, that feels like a huge compliment. Um, that experience, will that help you to soak in the moment and be a little bit more relaxed on, in Saturday's environment? Yeah. Um, I, listen, I don't know how I'm going to feel on Saturday. I can um, say, oh, I can enjoy the moment and just, you know, just just try to play tennis and and not really think too much about it. But there's going to be moments. There's going to be games. There's going to be points where I'm going to be thinking about, well, this could be my first Grand Slam title. Or, yeah, I, I will definitely have those thoughts. But it's more just just trying to control the emotions, uh, really. Um, but. Yeah, I think we we both played a, a really good semifinal match at the U.S. Open. Unfortunately, there were no fans, but the next time we play, there will be fans. So I think that's something that's going to be extremely exciting. So in the third set of that match, I think you were serving and you were like at 1540 and hit a ball that it turned out it was in. They called it out and you didn't challenge. Have yeah, I heard talk, about that. Have uh, you like, are there moments like that from that match that you've thought about in the last few months, or? Not really. Um, yeah, I, I didn't challenge the ball. Um, you know, people after came up and were like, "Wow, oh, you should have challenged the ball." And and I, I think my coach was like trying to tell me to challenge the ball, but I was like, "No, I'm not going to challenge the ball. The ball was out." Um, but yeah, if it was in, if yeah. You never know. It could have been a turning point, maybe, or I still would have lost the match. You, you never know. I can't really make excuses, but no, I've never, I haven't thought about it, or I don't have, uh, you know, it doesn't keep me up at night. Okay. You don't have to worry about that now with the system in place here. Yeah, yeah. I think with the electronic line calling, there's no, uh, you know, there's no, okay, well, maybe that ball was out, maybe that ball was in. Yeah. Okay, Aki, and then here. Uh, what is your oldest memory about Naomi on in person or uh, watching her on TV or whatever? Actually, we grew up um, playing junior local tournaments in Florida. Um, both her and her sister, I've played in the juniors, um, local like super series events, just like USTA sanctioned tournaments. Um, and I remember playing her in this tournament. This uh, it may have been like a lower level challenger event. Um, I think she was just coming up maybe inside the top 200 and I remember playing her and I was like wow she's so all huge like she, she's gonna be good <laughs> I mean I was like okay <laughs> she's she's got something special <laughs> okay Hugh? sorry Aki, uh, go ahead uh, do you remember something from the match uh, Naomi and the Serena's final like uh, in the US Open final three years ago um, no I actually I I didn't watch the match, so I I don't I don't rem remember anything. Yeah, sorry. Okay, here yeah, and then Craig. Yeah. When you were two weeks in lockdown, I mean, how did you feel your time? Do you are you been a binge watcher, and what series do you watch, or is, did you have like a real sort of set meal that you look forward to every day, or so? How did you feel your time? Yeah, I, I ordered. Um, I mean, uh, the first day I got there, I uh, I had grocery delivery, so I had oats delivered. So every morning I would have oats. 
oatmeal, and then um, I would actually order Uber Eats for lunch and dinner every single day, so I didn't eat one of the meals that were provided. Um, I ordered Hunky Dory the first seven days, uh, every single day, sometimes twice a day. Um, I'm, I'm a creature of habit, so I, I, I eat pretty much the same thing every single day, and uh, yeah, I, I would order there and other places. There were three places that I would mix it up between, um, but I actually didn't really watch. I didn't watch one Netflix series just because I knew once I started something, then I wouldn't want to do anything else except just lay in bed and watch Netflix. Um, so I actually spent a lot of time on FaceTime. I was FaceTiming a lot with other players that were in the quarantine, Sloan Stevens. Um, I was FaceTiming every single day with Annette and uh, Maria. We, we had like a group FaceTime, uh, so that made the time go by really quick. Um, but yeah, I think it was more just, just trying to stay positive and, and know that uh, there's, there's worse things out there than, than being in a room. Okay, Craig? Jen, uh, when that last point was played today, what was the first thing that came into your mind? Was it, I've won a tight semi-final, or I've reached my first major final? <sighs> I've reached my first final, yeah. Um, definitely, because, yeah, that's that's all I was thinking about the last game, serving. I was like, okay, let's just zone in here, and and I'm in the finals. I wasn't thinking about how, how good of a match or how, how tight the score was in the semifinals. It was just looking ahead into the finals. Okay, uh, here, and then Karen. Do twin sister play tennis? And like, do you come from a tennis family? Uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, she played when when we were younger, um, but but she she gave up. She she's a nerd. She studies. She's in medical school, so she has the brains, and I have the athletic genes. <laughs> um, yeah. Karen. It was a little late back in the U.S. Um, when you were playing, but have you received um, a lot of texts from people back home? And how have you heard from Chris Everett? And like, what role does she continue to serve for you? Yeah, I, I received a lot of a lot of messages, and I plan to respond to every single one. Um, just haven't responded yet. But, uh, yeah, Chrissy messages me every now and then a lot. Um, you know, she was somebody that s has seen me since I was 10, 11 years old. Um, so she's, she's probably known me the longest out here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome to have someone like her in your corner supporting you and, and cheering for you. And, and I definitely respect her, and, and I appreciate everything that she's done for me. Okay, last, one, uh, last two in the room, Craig, and then here. Yeah. Going into the final, will the U.S. Open match, the semi-final match, come into your mind at all in considering what an outrageously incredible match it was? Is that something that, you know, you could focus on or, or what, or not? Uh, yes and no, yes. Um, I think I can take away uh, the positives from that match and, and learn maybe what I did wrong that um, you know I wasn't able to come away with the result, um, but also no because I don't want to compare matches or compare uh, performances and, and try to replicate that because every match is different. Okay, last one here. Do you feel like you're a more evolved player since that match? I mean, I know it wasn't very long ago, but in terms of taking on Naomi again and you know you've got, do you feel like you've got a really good game plan of? how to beat her this time? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'll, I'll discuss with my coach uh, the, the day of the match or tomorrow evening just, just to review things that, that went well or things that didn't go so well in the, in the last time that we played and um, try to come up with a good uh, tactical plan. Okay, we'll go online, Sean. So we'll go to questions online, please. And our first one from the New York Times, Ben Rothenberg. Thank you. Jen, congrats. Um, I am curious, when we spoke after the third round, you admitted you were a bit surprised after having been in hard quarantine for 14 days to have made it into the second week of the tournament because maybe, you know, expectations could have been lowered potentially after that sort of setback. Just what, at any point during those 14 days, would you ever imagine you'd be in a final? And and if if not, then, then when did you sort of start letting yourself believe that this could be possible, that coming after, you know, starting way behind the starting line that you could be winning this race? No. 
uh, no. <laughs> Even before the quarantine, uh, yeah, I didn't, yeah, didn't think I would be where I am right now, sitting in this podium, answering your question. No, probably not. <laughs> Next question, thank you, from the Associated Press, Howard. Uh, I was going to ask something else, but let me ask a follow-up on that. And You had zero thought that you could be sitting here today before this tournament, even before the quarantine, you said, ready for a final. I'm just wondering, at what point did that change, or did it not? And you're in a little bit of disbelief sitting here right now. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm in disbelief. I, you know, I've definitely been practicing hard. I've, I've, I think I've earned the, the right to be sitting here, to be playing in a final, in a Grand Slam final on Saturday. Um, most definitely, you know, I, I've, I've put in a lot of work and, uh, I just think it's, it's crazy to believe, like, you just look at, at even just watching a Grand Slam final. Um, you look at, you know, two players and you're like, wow, that's, that's awesome that they're in the final. And you don't think about what it feels like if you were in that situation. So I think just that, just, um, you know, it's, it's the tables have turned and, and I'm here. I'm, I'm in that situation. And I just wanted to ask you about <clears throat> your experience playing Naomi in New York and how you would describe what it's like to play her and is there anyone else you've played that you'd compare her to? Uh, I don't think there's anyone that I would compare her to that I've played, not that I can think of, but she just puts a lot of pressure on you to, to serve well because she's, she's holding serve in like 45 seconds and um, yeah, she's serving well. She's coming at you with a lot of power, so it, it also puts a lot of pressure on you to 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 be aggressive and try to get the first strike. Uh, otherwise, you're you're the one running, and and I don't want to be running. Um, so I I think it's just she just puts a lot of pressure on you to perform well. Um, so I think you know I I have to think about that, but also not put that pressure on myself to to perform well. Next question from the National Ream. Uh, then last year you made quite a huge commitment of being away from home from July to December. And I'm wondering throughout that period, uh, did, you, did you think at all at any moment, like, I really want to go home or is this really worth it or not, or any of these dark thoughts? And how did you get out of them? And how much did that commitment contribute to where you are today? Yeah, actually, I was playing in, in, in Ostrava, Czech Republic. And I was like, during the whole match, I, I was just like, I, I just want to go home. Like, I want to go back to America. I want to I want to sleep in my own bed. I want to just wake up in my house in Orlando. And, um, and then I talked to my team, and I was like, look, like, after this tournament or after whatever, I, I'm like, I need to go home. And, and they were like, yeah, 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 of course. Like, whatever you, you know, whatever you need. And then it was like Australian Opens, everyone needs to leave by the second week of December. So I was like, oh, I can't go home. I need to train. So I didn't go home. And then, you know, the plans change. Australian Open was pushed back later. And then eventually I was able to go home for three weeks before coming to, before coming here. And final question. Thank you from the, oh, sorry. Go again, Reem. Sorry. Yeah, just to follow up on that, Ed, how much do you think that, commitment helped you reach where you are today? Yeah, I think um, without making that sacrifice of, you know, once you become too comfortable, I think um, that's when you're in trouble. So I think for me, going over and training in Germany, it, it you know, at times it might be, I might be like, okay, I wish I was home, but other times I'm like, okay, it's worth it. Um, you know, I just have to do what I have to do to become the best tennis player right now, and then afterwards I can live my life. Thank you. And next question from the WTA, Courtney. Thank you. Yep. Jen, congratulations. The other day you were talking about how going to UCLA kind of 
was the moment that made you realize that you wanted to be a tennis player, that your relationship with the sport and love of the sport maybe changed. And I'm curious, up until that point, what was your relationship with the sport? Because you made it sound like, you know, you kind of didn't like being a tennis player necessarily until it clicked and you did. But that seems like such a late part of your life to realize that at like 18, 19, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't think I really just appreciated the opportunities that I had with the sport. I was just going about, you know, just just doing the same thing every day, um, not really taking a step back and enjoying what I was doing. Um, I was just doing it because I had to, because I had nothing else to do, because I didn't know what else to do except for, you know, going and practicing five hours a day and, and you know, just waking up, doing it all over again for, I don't know, my whole junior career. Um, so I think in that aspect, I didn't really enjoy the sport. And also I didn't really have great success in the juniors. I wasn't really winning many matches. So that also takes a hit at your confidence because the the other juniors my age were, were doing really well and um, having success and having early success in the pros and, um, you know, playing challenger events and winning them and doing really well. And then I wasn't even passing first, second round of qualifying. So that was really hard for me, just just all my confidence in my game, just, you know, I, I took a hit there and uh, thought, okay, maybe I, I'm not, you know, meant for this sport. Maybe I'm, I'm not good enough and I'll go to college for four years and then I'll find a, you know, a real job. And then just one last question is just um, going off of Reem's question about kind of these sacrifices and stuff. Um, the discipline that it takes to not binge watch Netflix while you're in quarantine or to, you know, go to Germany, things like that. Where do you think that that comes from for you? Because we've seen a lot of players, uh, particularly American players, maybe not be able to, I don't know, want to be uncomfortable, you know, uh, when comfort is right there, you know, a plane right away or a click away or something. Yeah, I think it comes from my coach, Michael, and my trainer, Daniel. Um, just just having the trust in them, knowing that it, the time that I spend with them, I, I have, you know, my full trust in them, knowing that we're just, you know, doing our best every day at uh, just trying to make me as good a tennis player as possible. So I think just just knowing that I, I'm making a sacrifice for a reason and it's, and it's going to pay off, and, it, and, it, and I think it has.